Well, hello and welcome to Physics Games. I'm very excited because I've wanted to do this for ages. It's a complete series of videos that are going to go through the building of a prefab in Seven Days to Die. I'm going to show you pretty much unedited, raw and unadulterated the whole process, bugs and all, on making that prefab and then putting it into a world or generating it in a map as a POI. The plan is to go at a nice steady pace and I'll explain every key I press and every option that's available. And by the end of this, I'm hoping that you'll be able to join me in making your very own POIs all the way through from the very starting as a beginner right to the end where you're going to be editing the XML, setting it all up properly and then publishing it for the world to play with. So here's the YouTuber nag. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified of all the videos as they come up. And by the end of this, we should know everything. Let's get stuck in. So tutorial number one, we're going to set up today. We're going to get ready to do some proper building. We're in the main menu for seven days to die. And we can see right here, it says editing tools. And we're going to click on level slash prefab editor. Now what we're going to do is release lots of different videos, hopefully around 15 minutes, give or take. And we're just going to, with minimal editing, I'm just going to show you everything I do and explain everything as clear as I can on the way. If you've got any questions, please, of course, please, please, please just leave a comment. And this is what you're presented with. This is a brand new, clean, unadulterated, empty prefab. Now I've used the prefab before, so you can see that there's some things already in the toolbar. So I'm already prepared. I'll show you that in a moment, but you may not see this. You might see something because you've already been into the prefab before. If you don't see a nice blank canvas, then head into the kind of the menu system here by pressing escape and have a look in the top corner here. There are many different tools and options up here. In fact, well, many of them, there's five and and within them, there's many different things. And I'm going to go through all of these and explain them all over the whole series. But we're interested in heading to this side here, where it is the prefab browser. And yes, you might have one of these things um, already up showing. What we're going to do is click on create new prefab. And when we do, we're all going to see this. We're going to see this checkerboard pattern, which is the ground level. Now, I'm expecting when I make this video to find a little bit of a bug here. It may or may not happen. We shall see, but I'll explain all in a moment. Right, here we are. We're ready. Let's set up our hands so yours might look like what I've got. It's up to you. We're already in debug mode. That means God mode as such. We're already flying around. We're already in creative mode. So we can press U and we can get the creative menu. In fact, why don't I point to the sky? Because then you can see it all a little bit clearer. Now, what I do to start with is I type in admin and I grab myself the most important tool for any prefab making. That is the super digger. It basically explodes any block that you shoot at it and I drag that down here I do the same as well for the paintbrush not that you need that straight away you should leave your painting really till the final painting until everything is done but again I use it for kind of marking things out and, and testing stuff which is all good I do actually personally just personal preference I leave the first uh, kind of little slot on my toolbar blank because that is I, there's a lot of things you need to do with an empty hand in the prefab builder I also type in T-E-R-R -R and I get the uh, topsoil terrain filler for the POI so notice this POI in brackets there this filler will fill whatever terrain it's placed in. So if you place this POI or this prefab as a POI in the desert, then it'll have sand instead of topsoil. So this is just topsoil rather than the forest kind of earth as such. And then also I type in VAR and I just grab myself a wooden cube because I need to be able to place something down in a minute. So here we are. We're all good. That is the, the, the ground level already. And I'll just show you the mistake that people make. So it's not really a mistake, but it's just something that they end up correcting later. If you point somewhere and you press Z, you get a selection box. If you hold Z down and move it around, then you're going to expand that selection box. If you don't decide to do that and you come over here and you follow these little kind of markers down, we can make something nice and square and beautiful by pressing Z again. It just expands it into that area. If I then move to the topsoil itself, so it's in my hand, there it is in my hand, and I press the L button, I have now made a flat base. Pressing backspace gets rid of the selection, and I want to press 1 and go back to my hands. So here we are. I've got a nice little block here. Now, you're welcome to make your 
prefab any size you wish but you need to make it certain sizes if you want them to appear say in a city or a town in one of these random world generated tiles again i'll show you in a moment all of those but you can just get going but again there's still a little kind of problem maybe you've noticed it we the ground level's not quite correct because the ground level we've built on top of the ground level so by pressing escape and going up over to the level tools we can switch on and off the ground level we can also move it up one and then it's all flush that's all good we can turn this off and we could get building the only issue here is that if you want to build something underneath it like a basement to a house or a nice little tunnel or something like that there is no current room for you to do that because you've got something kind of flush with the very bottom so what i generally like to do is show the ground level and if i press down it will go back down but if i keep pressing that then it's not going to go down any further. So what I like to do to start with is kind of bring my POI up a little and uh, start building at this level. So what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to select this. But instead of pressing just Z, let me press backspace to get rid of that. I'm going to hold Shift and Z whilst looking at this block. And it's going to therefore select the block itself. Going to the opposite corner, I'm going to Shift Z and I'm also going to basically select it now i could press j and that would delete everything i'm going to press ctrl z which will undo that action and then we're going to copy and paste this and bring this up higher so ctrl shift and c that's copy not ctrl c ctrl shift and c then ctrl shift and v and I'm going to paste this here. And then I'm going to hold down the G key. This is going to give us our movement keys. And I'm going to start to bring this up. I might need to fly up a little bit higher here. Pressing G again. I'm going to bring this up right until it's all beautifully level with what I want. So I've got a bit of room underneath in order to build, which is great. I'm then going to hold Control, Shift and V. And you can see, there it is. It's just decided to put itself in this position. I'm going to press Escape. And then I'm going to turn off ground level and then I'm going to press backspace. Now, I've said that quite a lot. I will stop saying it at some point. But just because we know that we're going to have plenty of beginners here, I'm going to keep trying to tell you every key that I press just so it's as clear as possible. So now I have this kind of like this, this lump here, which is not needed. And I have this lump of terrain here, which is what I want to build in. And if I want to decide to build underneath, I can do. There will be room. So Shift and Z to select that side. Shift and Z to select this side. I've now selected all those blocks. I'm going to press J to make it all disappear. Backspace to get rid of that. And we now have our beautiful piece of land ready to build. I'm just going to check my ground level. I love it. And then I think, as most normal human beings would, I think I'd better save what I've done so I'm ready to go. Now, this is where we might encounter a bug today. I'm going to hit save and uh, it's going to pop up and it's because it's new and it's going to say, hey, what do we want to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name. Now, you can give it any name you wish, but it does mean if you don't give it a specific type of name that when you generate a, you know, you've half built this and you want to generate a map just to play normally, this might appear in it because it's saved in your app data, roaming app data kind of uh, folders in Windows. It's saved in something called local prefabs. So I'm going to call this AAA underscore and if I have my file name with that at the beginning, it means that when I generate a map, this is not going to appear in it. This is kind of like the little code that Seven Days to Die uses in order to stop, you know, any POI that, that they want from actually appearing. So we're just going to call this testing one, two, three, and then I'm going to hit save. So now this is this is saved. It says it at the bottom. It's all good, fine and dandy. Let's have a look at some other prefabs that might start with AAA. I'm going to go up to the prefab browser and I'm going to type AAA underscore. And you can see if I scroll up here, absolutely tons of them, loads of stuff. They're all kind of testing and and, and some fun things. There's a, there's a cheese base that's been made by uh, the fun pimps and lots and lots and lots of beautiful things here. But near the bottom, we are going to oh, near the bottom. It's all in alphabetical order here nearish the bottom there is AAA POI sizes so let's click on that once and then hit load and we're going to load this one up and you can see that it has examples of all the different sizes that will work and fit in to what's known as the randomly world generated tiles you can have so write this down if needed 150 100 60 
Uh, jumping over here, 42 the meaning of life or 25. And these are squares. If you do these, then you are going to be able to fit these in. There's other kind of non-square shapes that they use, but generally this is the uh, the sizes that are expected to be used if you want them to fit in. So if I press escape again, come on, I did press it. And then I type in RWG and we find ourselves some kind of randomly world generated tile. This is the roads and I load this up. You can see this is where your POIs might be placed. If you want it to be in a rural setting or a, or a town setting, whatever it might be. And you can see that they're all different sizes. So we can, this looks like a 25 by 25. This looks like a 42 by a 42. Let's just draw from one corner to another and then have a look. It should say somewhere in the middle, it's hard to see, or in the middle at the side, there it is. It is a 42 by a 42. I'm gonna press backspace, get rid of that. So there we are, so we can, we can build these things. And if you decide to build them, the right size to start with well that helps if you don't then really it's only going to be able to be placed in the world by you manually again i will show you how to do that or like it will have to be a wilderness poi because it won't fit in with the city tile let's press escape let's type in testing one two three and you can see here there it is testing one two three we'll eventually rename this because we won't want the aaa underscore on there we don't want that because when it's ready we want it to appear in our maps but for now it's fine there's no preview image available i haven't done all that again more for the future and i'm going to press load and what have we got? Well, I can see it. I've done this before and it suddenly seems to be disappeared. And sometimes you've got to turn yourself in the right direction. But let's see if the bugs appeared. I'm going to go to level tools. I'm going to show ground level. And there we go. This is what usually happens to me first time I make these things. I made that. You saw me. I made this. I lifted it up. I deleted the one underneath. But unfortunately, this now has decided to kind of bring itself down to the wrong level. So let's press escape here and then let's go to uh, move this down. And yeah, it's put it right down back on the ground again. I just don't trust it. I don't trust it. Well, trust me, it's, it's probably done it. I'm going to press escape quickly and I'm going to go editing tools and then level prefab editor. And when we get back in, let's have a look. There it is. Press escape, level tools, show ground level. Yep, it definitely decided not to lift it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to place this on here. It doesn't matter if I select it a little bit higher. It's just I'm selecting the air above. Control shift C, control shift V, pressing G, bringing this up getting this to be in exactly the right place that I want it, not where the level editor wants it to be. Um, that is going to be, that's one too low, me believe. So let me bring this up. Or is that one too high? Oh, it's being a right pain. Why? Because for some reason, it's also decided that it's only going to show me half the block when I copy and paste it. Don't worry about it. Let's go control shift V. It's all back fine and dandy. So now it's decided to put the little checkerboard above it so it's just being a bit of a pain but that's okay let's try leaving that one at the bottom hitting save going into a random poi then deciding to go back to our one testing one two three and if i open this up yes it's decided to put it in there so often what i do is i leave this one at the bottom um, usually it's fine if you delete it again, but I usually leave one on the ground level because there seems to be a bit of an issue there. But once you've got it set up, we can delete it at the end. It's not a problem. Once you've got that set up and you feel, whew, that's a lot of work. We're almost 15 minutes into this video and we haven't even built anything yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of ground level and I'm going to ignore that. We shall delete later and uh, we can start building. Well, I think it'd be very nice to make something, let's say, let's say 25 by 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift Z and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go uh, shift Z again. And what was this one? This was only 19 by 19. So yes, I could bring the map out and have a look at this, but let, let me show you another way of doing it. Instead of pressing G, and G would make it move about this box, I'm going to hold Shift and G. And we get these little kind of square icons on here. Now, sometimes we've got to maneuver ourselves so we can see these a little bit better. But Shift and G allows us to expand the box. And if you look carefully, just here, it might be hard for you to see on the YouTube video, but I'm just going to kind of keep going until it says 25 by 25. And when it does say that, 
Yep, there it is, 25 by 25. I'm going to hold that topsoil back in my hand and press L. And now I know, backspace to clear, escape, save, and I've said in other videos before, the reason I don't trust it, I often press F1 and type save world as well, just to be doubly sure. But anyway, that's just habit. So here we are. We have a 25 by 25. We're ready to build. It's above ground. The ground level's at the correct position. We are ready to rock and roll. All we need to do is just let our imagination go wild. So this is where you start placing blocks. If you've got a variable block, then you can press R and you can draw a shape and you can change it to different shapes and get, you know, I think you know all this. If you're this far into the video and you have decided you want to do this then you know a little bit about shapes and you've played the game but this is now your challenge this is your homework because we're we've, we've just done just over 15 minutes now i want you to build anything build anything whatsoever just build something on here i'll do the same and then we're going to come back in our next video and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna simply then start messing around with it and I'll, I'll build a few things and show you some tips and tricks then we'll move on probably to kind of like saving it messing around digging holes there's tons to do there's also all of these options so have a look around these things as well if you're not too familiar and try and, and have a mess around the worst you can do is break it enough that you're gonna have to uninstall and reinstall the game that, that's literally the worst thing that can happen and trust me I've done that probably about three times a week with the amount of modding I do but anyway look Thank you for being part of this video today and getting this far. This video tutorial will keep coming out and my usual videos will keep coming out too. We're going to go through absolutely everything. Again, any questions, put them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, just enjoy yourself. I'm just rabbiting on, aren't I? Watch one of the videos that seem to be coming up in front of me. Let me get a nice blank screen. Let me do that because then it'll look pretty. Because then anyone who's still here might actually, you know, click on them. Click on one of these things here and click on subscribe and notification and YouTube naggy nag 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 and, and all of that. Whatever, whatever. Let me just help you have a bit of fun in the game. I'll see you later. Goodbye!